All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We um, record the show every week as we are doing today, and it will be available to you watch for you to watch at your convenience later on our website, and I'll show you where you can access all of those recordings at the end of today's show. Um, both our live shows and our recordings are free and open for to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have on Encompass Live. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live uh, for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, schools, um, museums, archives, corrections, anything and everything. Really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on, um, sometimes talk about programs and resources and things we're offering here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers sometimes, and that is what we have today. Um, today we have um, a group of people uh, really, um, um, from uh, Nebraska's AARP to talk about the Nebraska Tax Aid Program um, and being able to reach those hard to reach um, taxpayers and help them. Uh, it is tax season. Uh, uh, starting up. I know our, my W-2s arrived and I'm sure other people's are arriving. Uh, so it is that time. So I will hand it over to you, uh, Rich, take it away and tell us all about what, um, what we can do. Good morning. <clears throat> my name is Rich Owen. I am uh, the Partnership and Communication Specialist for AARP Ta Foundation Tax Aid for Nebraska. And uh, with me today, will be uh, Betty Greer, who is one of our uh, officers in the program and will be running a virtual program this year. Uh, also with us, of course, is Katie Lofgren, who is the branch manager of the Milton R. Abrams Library here in Omaha. Uh, we're gonna go over uh, the tax aid program and what it is in Nebraska, how it works a little bit. Uh, it, is estimated that our program, we're primarily focused on going to uh, reaching people that are lower income and elderly. Although we will take anybody that walks through the door unless it's Warren Buffett. Uh, we're <laughs> not qualified to do his return, uh, but we can help most people that come in. Our primary focus are the elderly and the, the uh, lower income folks. So we estimate, the IRS estimates that there are half a million people in Nebraska that who could use our services. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of that population doesn't know about us. Uh, we have around 200 volunteers in the state and we have uh, over 20 sites uh, where there is personal preparation. And we have now, uh, as of last year and this year, a new site where folks can do their return virtually by uh, just sending us the documents and uh, uh, we can prepare it and get their return done. Uh, there's really a lack of awareness. That's one of the problems why we don't uh, have greater capacity. The other is that a lot of folks, even with the virtual system, uh, have trouble understanding the technology. We deal with the elderly and I know uh, I'm elderly and staying on top of modern technology is constantly a challenge. And frankly, the biggest reason we can't do more is because we don't have enough volunteers. Uh, our whole program is run by volunteers. There is a national leadership, but most of the entire nation in AARP Tax Aid Foundation is run by volunteers. So, sorry for skipping around the slides here. I run away fingers. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about our service delivery uh, modes. And uh, as I said, we do do in-person sites somewhere uh, where we have sites that people can come in and face-to-face -face, uh, work with us and we'll prepare and file their returns. Uh, 
Uh, we have several models. Some uh, the pandemic uh, caused us to make some alterations on it. But right now, we would like to talk about the virtual service delivery. So I'm going to bring uh, Betty Greer, who is the local coordinator for our virtual site on, and she can explain to you uh, the virtual system and how Nebraska libraries fit in. Just a moment. No problem. There you go. Hi there. Hello, um, Betty. Hi. I'm Betty Greer, and um, I've been with Tax Aid 20 years and worked for the Internal Revenue Service before that. And I love the program and how we can help people, especially in the rural areas where we don't have a lot of sites or uh, volunteers. So um, National Office has come up with a new, what we call a delivery model, and that is no no visit. We do everything virtually through um, computers, phones, printers, scanners, and things like that. So how how this works is the taxpayer um, schedules a virtual appointment, and then the counselor would start with that appointment and call the taxpayer, and then uh, first determine if they can do the return virtually. And if they can, then they would continue and sending them emails to um, with attachments to read all the legal documents that we would have like at a site with civil rights, uh, their their responsibilities as a taxpayer, you know, and the different things like that, just legal documents that are necessary. And then we send a second email that would have all the tax prep documents, which we have one that is um, to get the taxpayer to give us permission to do their return virtually and then our standard intake and interview sheet and once they get those um, they would uh, so we would set up an appointment with the counselor to do a google meet and in that google meet we would have them show their id card their driver's license or whatever they have for ID and their social security card so we can verify who we are talking to. And then the, the um, counselor would explain to them how this is going to work, where they're going to upload their documents, W-2s, 1099s, this intake sheet and the form giving us permission to um, electronically, excuse me, to do their return virtually. And then um, the volunteer would, that same volunteer would prepare the return and then, it, and of course, keep in contact with the taxpayer to make sure that we got everything right or if they had any more questions. And then it goes to one of our quality reviewers who is a, a separate person, a different person than prepared the return would review it and then send it back to the taxpayer, uh, having them review it and asking them to sign it electronically. And once it's signed electronically, it's returned to us, and we could see that signature, then we will e-file it. And it would be up to the taxpayer to get it printed. And so, um, let's see, I wanna make sure. And so, um, historically, how the virtual program has worked is we've only been in existence one year. We did not do a lot of returns last year and all for the same reasons uh, is um, lack of technology experience. Mm -hmm. So we do have some people who have had their returns done electronically, uh, but by other people, either a relative or a friend who had the capacity that they have an email address that they can upload and download and print. So. Um, you know, this basically is the wave of the future, electronics. I mean, mm -hmm. we can't even go to a restaurant without um, having them scan a code so they can look at the menu. So um, this is what we have to do. So what we would like, um, let me get my bearings here. I kind of went off on a tangent. No, you're doing good. Yeah, okay, so um, we believe that, you know, the libraries can be a big help here. Um, in both recruiting volunteers, providing space for in-person and drop-off tax prep, 
and uh, provide technical assistance uh, in using the program. Oh, I gotta go to the next one. So, and these are the things that we would ask you to do. Of course, scanning, if they need an email, set it up for them. We would prefer that you go through Gmail. Um, be there when maybe they do the Google Meet so you can they can communicate with the uh, counselor. And uh, what we would never ask you to do, um, ask answer any tax law questions. And then um, schedule the volunteer uh, who is present, if possible. So that is a question. I do have a question about, um, about the Google Meet and you said uh -huh. you prefer Google. Is it required that the taxpayer the per taxpayer have a Google account to use Google Meet, or can they do they do they have to have their own Google account for that, or no? Okay, um, we have other people here. They can't hear your question, so I'm just going to repeat it. Okay. Uh, the question is, do they have to have a Google account to use Google Meet? They don't have to have a Google account, but they have to have an email address and computer access. Okay. Any email address? Okay. Yes. With a, with a Gmail. Right. Okay. Did you hear that? No. They would be establishing a, a Google account with a Gmail. Right. Once, if you do get them set up with Gmail, yeah, that would automatically come along with it, which is why you said definitely right. prefer that because then it's just easier than they already have it. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. And here's Katie. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Katie Lofgren, and I am the branch manager here at Abrahams, um, which is one of the uh, 13 locations in Omaha. And this is my second year um, being one of the hosting sites, or being the manager at one of the hosting sites. Um, and our experience has been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful program to be able to offer to patrons. Um, my particular branch is kind of at a cross section. We do have, um, we, we just have a, a very wide range of patrons that use our branch. And it's been wonderful to be able to, um, when they come in with tax questions being, hey, guess what? There's a program right here in the, in the library and we can help you sign up for, um, for uh, a time to go meet with them. Um, so some of the things that um, was concerning to, to staff maybe when they first came in is, well, if we're an AARP site, they're automatically going to assume that we're we're part of that or that we can answer questions. And it is a hard line. We do not answer medical questions, legal questions, or tax questions. That's exactly. just libraries know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we absolutely don't do that. So um, it's it's perfectly fine. It, it's never been an expectation that we're we're helping them in any way with their actual taxes. Um, and as far as the different things that we need to assist them with, um, at least here in Omaha, those are things that we that we typically do on a day to day basis anyway, helping patrons scan documents for any number of reasons, um, helping them set up an email, um, definitely not doing it for them, but um, helping just helping them through the steps of getting that Gmail set up. Um, and then the online communications, we'll talk a little bit more here in a minute about the different um, things that you would need to have on site to be able to do all these things. Um, and then we, um, um, having the a, a whole new group of people being able to come into the library and use our resources, maybe they haven't been in the library before and it's a way to reach out to a new community. Um, and also it's just really supporting supporting our communities, which we should be, which we all are doing. Yeah. Um, and for years and years, libraries have been a place, it, it's always a huge um, ordeal <laughs> or a huge thing in the spring yeah. um, of providing uh, the tax forms, um, which I know that has changed over the years, but um, historically files of tax forms and people know go to the library to get all your paper that you need to then take home and use um, to get all your tax forms. That is all available online now. Um, but so libraries have kind of 
have levies shipped, shifted now, they still can provide the tax forms, but they'll just like help you print them out. Right. As opposed to having stacks of paper like we used to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so this is um, just an extension of that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so these are gonna be um, the questions or tasks that would be expected of of uh, the library staff that would be there. Um, so th one of the main things is that we have to have a computer that public the public can use. Um, it will need a working camera on the computer and whether or not that's um, something that's in the computer or um, the computer I'm on right now, actually it's, I mean, there's obviously a webcam, but it's just plugged into a USB. I don't actually have a webcam on my computer. That's what um, I have, it sits on top of the monitor. Yeah, a little yep. extra thing, yep. Yep, so they don't cost very much. Um, so that would be a way around, uh, you don't need an entire you know, computer system that has, has one built in. Um, working microphone on the computer, um, again, a lot of headphones, you can get a pair and then we, can, we just clean them uh, in between each patron use. Um, access to the internet. Um, and then the ability to scan documents. And I, um, I'm not sure how how easy or hard that is um, in other in other areas. Um, here we do have a um, just a regular scanner that's attached to the computer um, where you just do one page at a time. Our copier also can work as a scanner, um, and so we just put put everything in there and it just and we can scan to a USB that we then take to a computer. So um, either yeah. of those would work. That was a question I had is like, does the scanner have to be at the same computer that you're doing this on? But not if you have one that can put it onto the USB, you just move the Correct. little flash drive over. Correct. And that is something we do several times a day. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it, it works It works really well. Yeah. And it's actually, it's I, it, scanners in libraries have been, um, well, hit or miss over the years. But I do know that, and it was, we've just re recently been giving out grants to libraries um, this um, from last year, and many libraries are now getting um, a combo copier, printer, scanner, all one machine. Excellent. Yep. And so more, it's becoming more prevalent. Before it was a special device for scanning things, and, you, and it cost money, a lot of money, and it was a big deal. But now you can get one thing that does all of it. Um, and we, we gave grants to multiple libraries this year to get those. So Oh, that's um, amazing. All right. Yeah, so think about that. Anybody else who wants them, look for grants. Yeah, um, for our grants and, and, and it's, yeah, it's super slick. We That is what we have, um, I think, just a few years ago is when we finally got them at all of the branches here in Omaha. And they, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. It works yeah. really well. Um, and then the last thing would just be a private room or just um, some area where they'd be able to kind of shield themselves off as they are having that Google Meet session with a tax preparer so that they can have a little bit of privacy. Um, and then if you don't have some of these things, um, definitely refer the taxpayer to the nearest to the nearest library that might be able to help them. Um, but yeah, I, it's been nothing but wonderful for our community. So I'm really hoping that it's something that um, the rest of the state can start working on and, and take on. Yeah, I think a lot of this is something that libraries may all have um, in some way. Uh, maybe not a camera or microphone, well, microphones maybe, or headsets, because I know there's been a lot of like listening on computers, but the camera is a different one. Like you said, they don't cost much USB plug and play. Um, the private room, depending on the size of libraries, some places do not have like a meeting yeah. room or study rooms. Um, you could designate an office or like I said, just some area that's because it's, you know, secure information. Um, la last year, one of our libraries um, using the American Rescue Plan Act, I'm just giving ideas for libraries about how they could handle this. It, they um, applied for a grant to get a modular room. It's, it's, it's kind of like a phone booth size thing and it's just, you know, you put the pieces together, kind of you build a little room in a corner of your library. Um, it's, I think you can look at things like rooms.com, um, I believe is one they used. And um, so it's just, you know, put together these walls, has a little table and chair in there. You can put a computer in if you want to and have, if you don't have like a separate meeting room and you don't, of course, have the money to build a, you know, a, an actual room with walls and doors, these little modular rooms that you can just set up and then move around the library if you want to, or just find a corner where it fits. Um, and that's something definitely look for grants for um, getting one of those. They do cost uh, a bit of money. I think it was $2,000, um, but grants available for that too. So if you don't have a separate room, look into things like that, these modular rooms that you can build and um, have these pieces in your library. 
fantastic. Um, are there any questions for me on from my standpoint, or otherwise, I'm going to hand it back over to Betty. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, let's let's see. Anybody do anybody just have any questions for Katie? You know, for this, she's the librarian who's been working on this um, for the last couple of years. So um, get your questions in for her about how the library would handle this. Was anything you're wondering about? Um, we do have one question that I know I'm sure you can answer, and I don't recall if Richard had mentioned earlier. Is this a free service? Yes, it is. Which yes. is which is the amazing thing, and why I think it's a perfect fit for 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 our libraries. Right, and like yeah. Richard at the beginning, it's it was from ARP, but anyone can use it. Mm -hmm. It's not restricted. There's no age restrictions or no. um, uh, the, the income restrictions. It's Correct. not like for only low income people or only people over a certain age or anything. There's none of those. It's obviously you know trying to help people who are older <laughs> who need this assistance, but it's not restricted to only them. Absolutely. All right. Well, I don't see any questions right now okay. for you, but if they do come Excellent. in, I'll have you come back over. Yeah. So yeah, Excellent. I know. Type in your questions. Do you see them? Oh, wait, wait. Of course, something just typed in. <laughs> I can't see what people are typing. I have to wait for it to pop up, finish. So okay, hang on a sec. Um, oh, that's a good question. If scanning the documents are done on a main computer, can the staff then send those to a person's Gmail account rather than putting them on a flash drive? Can you? Would that be okay to then, like, email it to just the person? Yeah, if that's if you and your staff feel comfortable doing that, um, then absolutely. And then yeah, they'd have it on the computer. Yeah, when as, long, as long as there's a way for your library to be able to to get the documents to them in a safe and secure way um, mm -hmm. that everybody's comfortable with, then absolutely. Right. And then on the computer where they're doing the tax work with the tax preparer, they'd be able to download them and get them, well, yep. just we'll use that Gmail account to get them, just forward yep, to, them on. Yep, to, to forward them on, yep. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Yes, absolutely. Good question, yeah. All right, I'm gonna hand it back over right. to Betty. Thank you. Because cool. that is ultimately what needs to be done. It needs to be emailed to the tax preparer, so that's actually a perfect way to do it. Hi there. Hi. Okay, so what we need to talk about are some of the questions and tasks that we need to ask of the taxpayer and you, of course. The very most important part of this is that email. If they can't get an email, we can't help them. Now, if they can go through somebody else's email and they feel that that's okay, uh, you know, privacy is very important to us. Mm -hmm. But um, so we would ask that um, you um, create a Gmail if they don't have one and uh, make sure that the taxpayer writes down that email address and saves that password. Oh, yes. Libraries deal with that uh, every day. <laughs> right. And those passwords, you know, I have a two sided spreadsheet for all the passwords that I need for my different agencies. <laughs> yeah. And um, of course, that they um, they save their Google account login information too. So in order to make the appointment, we have different ways of doing this. Now, I know we only show one here on the slide and that's www.arpfoundation.org slash tax aid. Well, there's another easier um, website that you can go to and it's just aarp.org slash tax aid. And then also, um, if you want to have them call the United Way Information Service, and all they have to do is dial 211 across, you know, the whole state of Nebraska, and they can ask them if they could sign up for a AARP Nebraska virtual site and set up an appointment for them. And the last resort is we do have a specific phone number that they can leave a message and then someone will get back to them. And that is, if you want to write this down, 402-885-4816. And they would help them. Uh, they would get a call back. They won't, it won't be answered. They'll get a call back and uh, they can set up an appointment for them. Now, um, we talked about how Katie talked about how they need a safe location and you're going to help them with the login and everything. Did I go backwards? 
No, I should be here. Yeah, I'm on nine. Okay. The only thing that, um, so what happens is that um, once they have done the Google Meet and we've uploaded their documents, everything goes securely into what we call the customer portal link. And that is our software is called TaxLayer. And that is where all their documents will be will be sent to and then the preparer can use those documents to um, prepare the return so everything is very secure and um, again that's in tax layer not out in the cyberspace somewhere and back to katie yeah <laughs> All right, so um, some of the common questions that we would we would expect from uh, the taxpayer to come into the librarian would just be um, that uploading and scanning the documents. So we've already talked about that, about how if there's a way to be able to scan um, scan into them um, and then just help them complete or if they need help because oftentimes even if you've got the scanning portion they're going to need help uploading it as well or figuring out where where to click and then just make sure that they get all their tax documents and that you have scanned and then um, help them by printing a copy um, if you're able to do for free great um, otherwise whatever uh, you possibly charge for for printing. Um, ah, so this is a free service, but you don't have to stick to free if that's something that your library has their own rules about the printing. Right, because they will also receive a, um, I mean, they'll have that electronic copy. So if they don't need it printed out, they don't need to. Um, so they will still be provided a free copy just if they want it printed out for their records. Um, definitely, I mean, follow your own, your own policies for, for printing. Um, I do have a question about the scanning. Um, what about you? We talk, you know, Betty just mentioned that we are, they are very we're concerned with privacy. You want to make sure everyone is private. But with scanning, um, if you're scanning these documents, are they being saved somewhere on the library's computers still, or is that something that then you would delete after a session or helping someone? They it would be deleted after every session, or if they're using a library USB to take from the scanner and put it onto a computer, completely erasing that USB after they're done. Okay. Um, so yes, definitely deleting everything off of the the library computers or the library software or not software, but the library USBs. Um, we we should we yeah we should not be keeping any records. Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then just some of the benefits, like I said earlier, um, increased traffic. We might see people that we haven't seen before. Um, we can promote our other library services um, or other, you know, book clubs or programs or things that you're doing for the community. It's a different, it's a, just another way to be able to promote that. Um, and also just being able to help increase that technology education. Um, like Betty said earlier, every, everything is going towards online. So um, just in any way we can get the public um, more and more comfortable with using technology. Um, it's it's a great service to to our patrons. You can finish it up. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. That's all. Okay. Um, so our last slide here. Um, so online orientation for library staff would happen um, February 2023. Any questions that you have? Um, could be answered at that point. Um, and then the filing season um, starts on February 1st, or <laughs> today, February yeah, 1st. Today. Yeah, and filing season, yeah. Um, filing season ends on April 18th, but I believe that the last time that they're taking um, any appointments is going to be on April 14th, because they need those couple extra days so that they can look at all the documents, get it prepared, go to the quality reviewer, and then come back to the to the taxpayer. So um, and submitted and submitted on time. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So because April 15th falls on a Saturday, the actual tax deadline for everyone is to Tuesday? Okay. Yep. 
Um, so this online orientation for library staff, is this something, um, if a library wanted to get involved, they would reach out to set up that training or is that something that's scheduled and they attend whenever it's been set? Does that make sense? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that that does make sense. So um, I would um, I would definitely say you can reach out to me. The I I think the online orientation that was that was this, yeah, just letting everybody know about the know about it. But if you have any questions at all, especially from the library standpoint, um, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to talk with with anybody or everybody and answer whatever questions you might have. Uh, okay. Okay. So online orientation. You're talking about this session we're doing right yeah, now. Yeah, this that's session. Yeah, I think okay. that's what they is your online orientation. Okay, which is great because this will be saved and we'll have the recording available for anyone who wasn't here to be able to join us today. So perfect. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So. Um, okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, just if there are any questions, we'd be more than happy to to answer them at this point. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. If um, if I would put my information into the chat, would that go to everybody or? Um, I can get it out there. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. OK. Yep. All right. I'll get that in here. So um, yeah, so yeah, anybody have any questions, go ahead and get them typed in. We've got plenty of time to answer any questions, go through any processes or anything you um, uh, wanna know more about. Um, like I said, this is the orientation to this, to trying to get libraries on board to be um, more locations to be offering this service to helping libraries or to help taxpayers use the virtual service. Yeah, service. Service, yeah. Um, yeah. And the 885. Okay, so um, I was just told that the, if librarians have any questions for the tax aid side of it, that phone number that Betty provided earlier, the 402 885 4816. 4816. Um, librarians can also call that if you have any questions. Um, and then uh, one of the tax preparers would get back to you and answer any questions you might have if you have something from, from their side of it. Sure, great. All right. Um, Ah, we do have a question. I think I did see it in a previous slide, but it wasn't really uh, went didn't go into it very deeply. Um, are there any advertising and promotional materials that we could get? I think there was something about posters. So, what would be provided to libraries to help promote this? Yes, we um, there are posters that we have. Um, would you be able to send them out to libraries? I can send them out a poster that has uh, information about the virtual system yep. and uh, is there a distribution email or something I can send that to or individually? Yeah. Um, so we could send it out. Uh, they said said they could send it out digitally. Um, and yeah, the posters have already been made because we've got them up here, here at okay. Abrahams. So, so you, they would send libraries a digital copy and they could print out themselves? Correct. Like a flyer yep. type size thing? Yep. Okay. Is there anything bigger than that that's available or are you just doing the? Um, I believe so. There's also one that's uh, legal sized. Okay. But but yeah, no, nothing nothing larger. You don't need a special site like giant printer or something to print out yeah. any of this stuff. I guess no. is the question. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah. No, the the majority of it is um is just regular flyer sized. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yeah, that would be definitely be helpful. Um. So the particular service that we're talking about here is the virtual. Um, virtual. Thing. Yep. Just because there aren't a lot of um, tax sites outside of Omaha and Lincoln um, yeah. in-person ones because there aren't enough volunteers. So mm -hmm. if through this in some of the more rural areas, if there are people that are like, ooh, I'd want to help with that. I mean, they they definitely, if they had the volunteers, they would have more sites. Sure. sure. Yeah. So maybe if you know somebody who might want to volunteer and yeah. need people, also reach out to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little more people, yeah, because that was one of the questions is what about any in-person, but and that's the whole problem, that's the whole issue. That's that's the whole yeah. issue, yep. Yeah, they don't do the in-person um, workshops so or webinars is... or trainings because there aren't the people across the state. Right. There, are, there aren't the volunteers that are able to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, do you know how many volunteers are there doing this through Oh, that's a good question. How many volunteers are there that are helping? About 200 total. There's about and 200. Oh, wow. That not everybody is a tax preparer. We need people to greet our taxpayers mm. and get them started. 
Um, yep. Not everyone is a tax tax preparer. Um, there are greeters um, that that greet them and get the. Yep. People that talk to them over the phone and making appointments and stuff like that. It's not sure. just it's not just if you have tax information background. Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody so, can yeah, volunteer. So the people get them set up and then they mm -hmm. pass you on to the people with, like Betty, the IRS experience and knowledge right. and official training on yeah. that. Ah, nice. Big okay. Perfect, all right. Um, other questions we have, I'll go ahead and type in more questions if you um, have them. Um, I don't think of anything that I had. Oh, I was looking on, I, we do, I was looking to see, we do have, um, if from the session page for today's show, I did link to the Nebraska's AARP page, just the general one. And there is right there on the front page, a, a kind of an article of theirs about get tax help from AARP Foundation Tax Aid that um, actually gets you um, the phone number and that 211 number for the United oh. Way to get set up with um, and it does say your local library may also be able to help you set up an appointment. <laughs> um, and it does have a link to that tax aid uh, from the AARP Foundation website that Betty mentioned earlier as well. So you'll be able to quickly get to all that information um, from the session page for today's show as well. Um, I'll also mention uh, these slides will be available as well. Um, when we're done here, Katie, you can email them to me if, if you're willing to yeah. share, if they're willing to share these. Yeah, yeah of course. We sometimes do if it's available um, when the recording is available, have the slides as well. So you'll have see all those links and all the information and, and everything you might need as a library to um, get started in doing this at your library. I can also see if I can get the digital file um, for the flyer so it can just all be. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, that can be. Yeah, we can put yep. that up there with the, with the record on the archive page, too. Absolutely. Yep. We can put anything up that's useful. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, okay. Question here. I'm not sure. Uh, 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 so I'm just going to read this. It's kind of confusing to me, but we'll see. Uh, it says, can the library promote this service in addition to the flyers provided? Um, I guess you just mean like talking it up to the patrons. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the whole point of the virtual is oh. to just try and reach a lot more people than what they're able to reach right now. I see. Yeah, he says, oh, okay, he clarified, with with their own flyers, like maybe as part of, like you said, here, like you said, this would be a good thing for the library because you can help promote other things too. So yes, you could put this on a flyer with yep. your own flyer that you make up of, here's all the things the library does, or here's something we're doing. Yes. Yep, absolutely. You're not like required to use theirs, but they're probably very nicely done and have all the information you need. <laughs> but it's okay to also like incorporate yep. it into something the library is doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that you can get two for one and make sure you get all, mm -hmm. all the yeah. libraries on there as well. Get the news out, however. Um, so if, if the library wanted to start doing this um, and you know, become an official, so is there somewhere that lists officially well, that's where which libraries are a place to go for this? Like, is there like a look up my local location? No, um, not yet since this is um, the, the first year that we're really um, reaching out to other libraries to see if they, mm -hmm. um, they want to, I can definitely, we can definitely talk about that if there's, about, for, for future years. Yeah. If there's something that. Um, so is Omaha where they started this as a kind of a pilot project, I guess, for here in Nebraska? Um, uh, kind of a little bit. Um, uh, Rich and I just have a, such a really good working relationship. That, and um, I, I just appreciate this service so much for our patrons that um, my, my enthusiasm got me on, <laughs> got me on board. So, um, yeah, because this is something that the ARP Foundation's been offering, and now we're just trying to get libraries to help make it even yep. more. Yeah. Yeah, because last year was the first year for the virtual, I believe. Ah, okay. Um, so yeah, this it really is just a it's a new. Brand. Yeah, it's a brand new program. Okay, great. Yeah. So if a library wanted to get um, involved in doing this, should they contact the ARP or contact you, Katie? What's the best starting point for a library saying I want to officially be one of these? locations 
or does That's it not? Awesome question. Um, it, I don't know. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to pass that question off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they want to know um, if they want to officially become a As I understand the question, um, the question is, will there be a list promulgated that lists libraries that have all the resources and have been indoctrinated and are ready to go out and do that? Is that correct? Um, well, that's one question. Yeah, I was wondering, is there somewhere where a person could look and see, is my library providing this service? We can certainly um, make such a list. and. Uh, put that out what we're saying right now is you know if you can't come to an in-person site uh, mm -hmm. please check with your local library right. and we aren't any more specific than that and i know <laughs> anecdotally of one instance where a relative of somebody that lived out uh, i believe by north platte uh, tried to go to the local library and they didn't know what uh, he was talking that. about yeah. uh, because we haven't you know put this out until today this is our first uh, reaching out yeah absolutely yeah so if a library did want to become one of these official sites to do this they who should they reach out where should they reach out to for a library to become like official is that you aarp katie where's the best place for a library to officially become one of these well sites? i don't want to volunteer katie for more work because she's already done so much for us already but uh She's a great point of contact and she's here all the time. The official AARP things are, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm glad she bought into that. Uh, it, we could give you a number, but most of our numbers are Google voice numbers for security reasons and uh, confidentiality, and they're not monitored. So somebody calls and they can leave a message and hope that we get back to them at some point because we have to go in you know to the software to actually see it mm -hmm. uh, if Katie is willing and apparently she apparently she is um, she could be a point of contact because I suspect most of your members already have her information and I will be seeing her regularly between now and April 13th mm -hmm. so uh, I think that would be a good place to go okay so we'll tell libraries yeah if you want to be part of this contact Katie at Omaha and she'll get them connected with you um, um, to make it official that you are one of these sites and get all the information that a library needs. Correct. Yeah. Um, there's also that phone number that was given out before, the 402-885-4816. Um, uh, Betty, that number you gave out is your Google Voice number. Okay, that's a Google Voice number. Every site uh, in Nebraska has an assigned Google Voice number. Our national uh, set that up, and it's specifically, um, it's more secure than if you and I went out and started a Google Voice, uh, it wouldn't be as secure as the setup they have. It's a commercial type thing. So every site in Nebraska has an assigned number. They all start with 402, even if they're out west. And, uh, ah, okay. but again, we have to go open up the software, go in, see that there's a message and then respond to it. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, and we do have a question here, just clarification. Um, they do not need to be AARP members to, to use this service, correct? Absolutely not. Uh, that is not a requirement at all. And I might just <clears throat> emphasize a little bit, AARP Foundation is the sponsor of the tax aid program. I know there may be some, um, some people may have a bad feel about AARP in some of the positions it's taken, but the Tax Aid Foundation is underneath the aegis of AARP, but it is independent and it is solely devoted to doing uh, tax preparation for elderly and low income people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so that's their, but they're not required to be as well. I mean, oh, that's just, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question. They are not required to be members at all. We'll right. anybody in the public, and we serve anything from 14 year olds that got their first job and want to get their withholding <laughs> back, all the way up to centenarians who um, we have a couple of people that are over 100. So we we wow. do the gamut. Awesome. <laughs> we don't have an official income limit, nope. but 
uh, and it's rarely a problem. Uh, most of the people we see are, you know, within our scope. That's well put. And uh, but we do have we've had situations where somebody came in with uh, a lot of money and wanted us to do their return and. In most cases, they're out of scope. Uh, our, we're trained on certain aspects of the tax law. Uh, there are aspects we are not trained in, and therefore we don't, we are not able to do returns for them. But there's no published. If you make over a hundred thousand, we're not going to see you. Uh, but if you do, you'll probably get referred to say, you know, you really need an actual accountant. <laughs> you need your own CPA or something because this is beyond what we. <laughs> That would be done in the case of a virtual in that very first contact when we reach out to contact them. Uh, there are questions that are asked then concerning whether they're in our scope of training or not. And uh, so we would, at that point, we would be able to identify folks that we couldn't help. Absolutely makes sense, yes. Um, all right, I'm gonna just do this here. So I have sent out on the questions in chat Katie's email address at um, Omaha Public Library. It's also something anybody can find online, you know, Omaha staff. Uh, but, you know, klofgren at omahalibrary.org. And um, definitely you can uh, reach out to her with um, any questions and to become one of these official sites, get all the resources you need, get connected with Rich and Betty and whoever else is gonna be doing the volunteering for this and doing this tax prep. Um, uh, anybody have any other questions? We still got a little bit of time left. If you do have anything else you want to ask, or if there's anything else that Rich or Betty or Katie, you all want to share as kind of like a final words <laughs> for today. Um, I think this is a great service. I'm glad that it's out there for everyone. I know um, taxes are horrible and annoying and can be very stressful for people, for me too. And um, just having someone you somewhere you can go to and as I said earlier I think when Katie was on uh, libraries have been doing providing help to live to patrons people coming in to get tax forms for years uh, piles of paper and all the paper tax forms and it's gone virtual now and libraries have have switched gears to doing that and providing okay go here and print out your forms and I think this is a great just addition to that that libraries have already in many communities already known as the place to go to at least get the paper or get the forms and um, shouldn't be very hard to <clears throat> add this as not only can you get the form, but you can get some actual help from someone and we'll get you to those people. So you'll definitely promote this a lot. Yeah. Well, I don't see any other last minute desperate questions coming in. Um, is there anything else you wanna share, Rich? Or if you wanna see if Katie or Betty have anything else they wanna say? I think we've covered things very well, and I just want to uh, express my personal and organizational appreciation to Katie and to uh, the library uh, libraries across Nebraska for being interested in this. Uh, working with you folks has just been an absolute pleasure, and the staff, you're all uh, very motivated to help your patrons, and uh, that it's a pleasure to work with such people. One last thing, if I may, I want to point out that if somebody expresses interest in becoming a volunteer, uh, you do not have to be a CPA, an accountant, or whatever, uh, a lawyer to uh, be a preparer. I was an airline pilot for crying out loud. I don't know <laughs> anything. So uh, as long as you're trainable, uh, we can take we can take uh, volunteers. I barely made that cut, but uh, so that's all I have to say. And I want to thank you very much for uh, giving us this voice to your community. Of course, uh, I think you, you do great. Yeah. So yeah, anybody who else wants to volunteer and do this, they um, would appreciate the help. Reach out to the ARP Foundation, Nebraska, and like I said, we've got a link to the page there, so um, that could definitely um, get you connected with them. All right. I think I will. Anything else? Look like someone was saying something to you. Just a minute, Betty had okay. something here. Just a minute. Absolutely. You want to speak? Hi there. I just want to mention that all our appointments are scheduled for either a Wednesday or a Friday from 10 till 2. 
So oh. those are the days that you might want to, you know, block time off if you're helping taxpayers. That's just for the initial appointment. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really up to the counselor and the taxpayer when they're going to do the Google Meet, because that would be a second contact. Follow but that up. first contact is ten till two Wednesdays and Fridays. Ah, okay. So okay. that's the we should just to get started. And then after right. that it could be any time that works for the preparer. For the two of them, right. Yeah. And and the library, of course, yeah. If they're sure. helping them in that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Libraries have evening hours and weekend hours sometimes. Okay. Sounds All right, good. thank you. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Hello, hey, Katie. All right. Any last words before I wrap things up here? Anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask? Get them in. But you can also always reach out to Katie at any time. I don't see any other questions coming in now. Anything else you want to say, Katie, before I uh, do my wrap up here? No, it's okay. It's great to see. I don't know who all is here, but hello. If I know you, hi. I miss you. <laughs> awesome. All right, so I think we will wrap things up. Thank you so much, uh, Katie, tell, tell Rachel and Betty, thank you. Um, I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen and do my wrap up, but you can just hold on here. And we're doing it, there it is, okay. All right, so as I mentioned, I do have the link here that goes to, this goes to the AARP main page for Nebraska. Do it. Let's try this. There we go. Yeah, of course. Uh, there we go. And they do have the right over here get tax help from AARP Foundation Tax Aid. And um, so that will have the basic info and the um, phone numbers to call uh, getting started the taxaid.aarpfoundation.org and your local library may be able to help you. So we do have that link right in there in the session page for you to get. Um, more information. Uh, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Uh, thank you again, uh, Rich and Betty and Katie, and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, the show is, uh, is being recorded right now, and I'm just going to go back to our main Encompass Live page here, and these are our upcoming shows. Our archives, link to archives, is right at the bottom of the screen here. This is all of our um, uh, recordings, most recent one at the top of the list. And then going backwards. So today's recording will be there, should be up by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and um, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's available. Uh, we also have a Facebook page that we post to Encom uh, for Encompass Live. We link to that. So I'll, I'll promote out here. You can see we do um, reminders to log in, meet the speakers, pres um, announcements when um, recordings of shows are available. So we will um, post this here as well. And we do use the hashtag EncompLive, little abbreviation on Twitter and Instagram. So if you like to use any of those social media things, you can get access to us there um, and see what we're doing and or, um, or on our um, mailing list that we have here through the Library Commission. Um, these are our show archives. I'm going to show you here there is a search feature if you want to look for any topic we've had in Encompass Live, see if we've done a show about something. Um, you can search the full show archive or the most recent 12 months if you want to. Um, be, and that is because this is our full show archive, and I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom of the screen because it's a huge page. Um, going back to when Encompass Live premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're at the beginning of our 15th year of Encompass Live. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so just do pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything in these archives. Um, many of the informants, much of the information will um, stand the test of time and still be good, useful, but things will be old, some things will become old, outdated, resources may have changed drastically, um, links may no longer work, um, people may not work at the same library that they presented on 10 years ago. Uh, so just pay attention to that when you are watching any of our archives. But uh, we will always keep them here somewhere we have as long as we have somewhere to keep them available. We use YouTube right now. Um, like librarians do, we keep things for historical purposes. We'll always have all of our recordings up there for anyone to watch. Um, so that's today's show. And next week, I hope you'll join us when we were talking about um, accessibility, not just for patrons. 
um, internal documentation documentation for everyone. Um, you know, we've all, we at libraries we do a lot of work with making sure our libraries are accessible to our patrons. But what about us as well, in as staff? So we'll be talking about that in next week. Um, also, I want to remind everyone here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we do host this. I do host this Encompass Live show, but we also do our annual conference, Big Talk from Small Libraries. This is um, where all the presenters are from libraries with an FTE of 10,000 or less. So all of our smallest libraries across the country presenting on different topics. Uh, the conference is the last Friday in February, so it's coming up February 24th. Um, and the schedule is up and registration is open. So please do register, see, look at our schedule and see if there's um, what topics may be of interest to you. It's an all day conference. Um, the whole day is recorded. It's done through a go to webinar like we are doing today. And so if you cannot, um, aren't available the whole day to watch everything, it will be available in our previous conferences uh, over here. So please do um, register and spread the word about Big Talk from Small Libraries. So sign up for that and sign up for any of our other upcoming Encompass Live shows. So thank you everybody for being here with us this morning. Thank you, Katie, Rich, and Betty, and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye.